spoiler warning. I can't believe that Luke Skywalker got stabbed by Kermit the Frog. I, 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 it felt that a little crazy. forced at first. It kind of yeah. felt like Disney was just trying to merge all of their different franchises together. Yeah. But overall, I actually kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. And Ray part Wookiee? That was unexpected. We didn't see that coming. Yeah. The part where... <laughs> <laughs> Oh the the part where she had to shave off all of her facial hair, it was just really emotional. <laughs>Hey guys, what's up? This is Bruce Dwayne, and today I'm here with Daniel once again. Not virtually. Not virtually, so hopefully his voice will record. We're gonna talk about our predictions, so real spoilers to come, so go away. Those were fake if you didn't realize. So heavy spoilers for this movie. Yes, and we're spoilers. We're spoiling We're spoiling everything. Every aspect of the yes. movie we're gonna be talking so about. So go away if you don't want spoilers. Go. Han Solo <laughs> dies. Han Solo dies. For a third time. A Yes. Will Rey turn to the dark side? Daniel said no, and I said yes. No, she did not turn to the dark side. Which I'm very happy about that, but I got that one wrong, so point Daniel. Will Kylo Ren turn to the light side? So this one is kind of up in the air for which one of us gets the point. Um, I said no, and Daniel said he would leave Snoke, but not necessarily turn to the light side. Kylo Ren kills Snoke. All right, so I'll give that one to Daniel. So Daniel now has two points. Doesn't look too good for me. Then we get into the Force Ghosts. I got all three of these right. Woo! Will Yoda's Force Ghost be in the movie? I said yes. Daniel said no. And I was right. Yoda was in it, and he was awesome. Yes, Yoda was a highlight. All right, and then Obi-Wan and Anakin, they just didn't show up. So I got both of those points. Who is Laura Dern's character? Daniel said resistance officer. I said first order officer. Daniel was correct. Point Daniel. But she was a jerk. Literally, they don't reveal that she's actually a decent character until like two seconds before she dies. Right. Who is Benicio Del Toro's character? I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Daniel yeah. said Lando's successor, and I said voicing the poor. I definitely got that wrong. Um, I kind of got that right because... Lin yeah. I'll give you half a point on that one. I lost this one, guys. Uh... So we're going to talk a little bit about what we thought about the movie as a whole. Yeah. Um, I personally, we both, I think we both really liked it. Yeah. It was really good. It wasn't a complete flop, which I just had this little thought in the back of my mind. This might have been, this might be a complete flop. And it wasn't. It was good. It was a 9 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I, I rate movies out of 5, and it was a 5 out of 10. Or 5 out of 5. So, okay, I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. I don't give it half stars either. But, I'll, yeah. So Daniel gives it. Nine out of ten. You can rate it however you want. That's just All right, how I rate four it. Four out of five stars. Four out of five. I give it five out of five. I, I'm a very, I'm a very nice uh, star giver when it comes to that. <laughs> well, Basically, the thing is, yeah. I give, I give the Force Awakens a three out of five. Really? Yeah. I give the Force Awakens five out of five as well. Anyways, I think it's too early to decide whether I like this movie better than The Force Awakens. I've only seen it once. I need to see it again. There's so much information the in this one. The biggest complaint I see for this movie is, like, Episode 7 was too familiar. Rogue One didn't feel like a Star Wars movie, which I don't agree with, but I just see that complaint a lot. And then this one just had too much information. Like, too, it was too new. Which is the biggest complaint I've been seeing so far. I I don't think that's why it didn't feel like Star Wars or didn't feel right. I just something with the pacing, especially right at the beginning, it just uh, something didn't feel Star Wars, something just wasn't quite right. I at the end, I mean it totally redeemed itself in the end, but something about the something about the beginning just the, didn't feel The first right. act was definitely way too slow. And my overall biggest complaint about the movie would be that there was not enough locations. We only saw a maximum of five locations, but yeah. one of them I don't even really count because it was literally in the movie for like two one, minutes, <laughs> like one shot. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Right. Oh, it was. Yeah, it wasn't even movie for two minutes. Snoke's ship, this space scene, the rebel ship, that weird casino place, and then I guess the okay. So yeah, five. There's a total of five. Yeah. Scenes. There, yeah. There, I guess there weren't there weren't quite a lot of locations. I mean, in episode seven and all the other episodes, there's just tons of different places they go, different looks. And they all feel they all work. They all feel very Star Warsy. Yeah. This that one that one planet they went to to get the the code breaker uh, that that I didn't work that. for me. I feel like they should have omitted that that entire planet. And the whole thing about it was they got betrayed in the end, and ultimately they failed their mission as well. So it just kind of felt like a bunch of wasted time. And also Poe Dameron's whole plan 
yeah. also was just completely wasted because he turned out to be wrong all along. Yeah. I, yeah, they went on it. Um, Poe and Finn and um, Rose's their their whole heist thing they were trying to do it just failed in the end. So I feel like I feel like that part of the movie didn't need to be there necessarily. I feel like it just added to there too much going on already. Yeah. Um, we're 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 just kind of saying all our negative things about the movie right yeah, now. We're, we're, we we really we liked it. We're just talking about the things we didn't like. We're getting into the positive soon. Yeah. Because I have um, a lot of stuff to praise about this movie. To be honest, I could have forgiven everything else that I didn't like about the movie just perfectly fine if it hadn't been for this one thing. Um, the whole the whole internet between the time the Force Awakens came out and and now has been hyping up Ray's identity. All I feel like all the producers and directors and cast members have been hyping up her identity. Uh, everyone, even in the movie, they hype it up. They're like, the whole thing is like, they keep us in suspense. Who is Ray? Who are her parents? There's and then she just turns out to be nobody. I don't, I would have been okay with her being anybody. I would have been okay with her being nobody, even if they just hadn't hyped it up, in, even in the movie. They they made it like an actual major yeah. plot point of the movie just to say, oh yeah, she's nobody. Like, literally yeah. nobody. I, I just, I don't, I don't mind her being nobody. I just, I feel lied to. I, I was expecting her to be a Kenobi. I was totally feeling it. And I mean, we'll see what J.J. Abrams does in episode nine. The whole movie felt like it should have been the complete of the, like the ending of the trilogy. Yeah, I'll agree with that. They ended, the, like the rebellion is complete. There's, it consists of maybe like 20 people right now. And then the first order, I mean, Supreme Leader Snoke was murdered, and Kylo Ren is very emotionally unstable, yeah. as is General Hux. Yeah. So I don't know how much of well, a foundation... Well, General, General Hux could do some damage if he was in charge, but he's not in charge. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know how much of a foundation they have, because they destroyed the Dreadnought in the beginning, which mm -hmm. was a big ship, and then they destroyed Snoke's ship, and we we also saw them destroy Starkiller Base, so I actually don't know how much of the First Order is yeah. left. There's, yeah, I feel like, yeah, both sides are very, like, depleted, I don't know what they're going to do aside from just setting episode 9, 10 years in the future when they've built their stuff back up. I feel like an, a big problem with this is it felt different than The Force Awakens. Not necessarily in a bad way, but the fact that it is different is a problem. It, it was... It's so it, I blame it on the change of writers. Because writers and directors. It, I, it has a lot to do with directors, trust me. <laughs> And it's it's the writer. I mean, they had different, completely different writer and director for both movies, and that's that's definitely why that happened. I I don't know why why they even switched directors. J.J. Abrams did a great job, I thought, on the Force Awakens. I don't think he it. wanted to do the second part. I think he kind of wanted to give it to someone else and then work with what they did. But I feel like Ryan Johnson really yeah. just kind of ripped. Like, yeah. He completely just undid everything that we knew. Yeah. Another big problem. They nobody in the movie said I have a bad feeling about this. Yes, we realized. What that the heck? I'm done. 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 No, not Star Wars. After the movie, Cameron and I were talking, and uh, I all of a sudden just realized, wait a minute, I never heard the iconic line. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about Dang this. Dang it! I could have missed it. I mean, there was no, a lot. No, we didn't lot. miss it. I would have. I would have been laughing at it because it's there, hilarious every time I I hear the line. As far as I know, it wasn't there. Which I was a little upset about when I realized it, mm -hmm. but too. I feel like this movie definitely was kind of. I feel like it's almost symbolic as well because like they broke Anakin's lightsaber in half, mm -hmm. similar to how he's kind of just breaking all the conventions that we knew about Star Wars mm -hmm. with this movie. Yeah. Um. Overall, I mean all. All in all, all those things can be fixed. I feel like with Episode Nine, I don't, I don't think it's gonna bring any problems to the Star Wars universe necessarily. But it, I, I, just, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I really, I really need to watch it a second time. That was kind of the cons. Section. Yeah, that was kind of the cons. Let's section. go to the pros. So, Porgs are not Ewoks 2.0. I loved the Porgs. The Porgs, they didn't oh, feel... they were great. They didn't play a role in the movie other right. than comedy relief. That's right. They didn't play a role like the, like the Ewoks. They were just they were literally just birds on Luke Skywalker's island. And they were easily one of the highlights yeah, of the movie. Yeah, they were great. Which sounds like the movie was bad in comparison, <laughs> but no. They were just really good. And another thing I liked was the overall theme that I think they're trying to get across of the movie was kind of blurring the lines of what we perceive as the dark side and the light side of the force. Because at the end of the movie, Snoke is dead and Luke Skywalker is dead, which is like the ultimate bad and the ultimate good in the universe at that moment. 
So now we're left with Kylo Ren and Rey, and we're both kind of left wondering what side they're actually on. Yeah, I'd... because Rey is obviously leaning towards the light side. Oh and... yeah, Rey is going to be Rey is a Jedi. And, I mean, Luke Art Skywalker and, already said that. And Rey is or not Rey. Kylo Ren is leaning towards the dark side. But as we saw, I... Rey has this call to the dark side, as we saw when she was training. And Kylo Ren will always feel the pull of the light side. So I feel like the ultimate theme was kind of blurring yeah. the lines between what we know as good and what we know as evil. I'm, I'm not sure I like that, but <laughs> uh, I, I like I like there being good and evil and uh, good triumphing over the evil. I feel like now that Rey and Kylo Ren are like the two main evil and good characters, I feel like they're going to become more. So I feel like Rey is going to become very founded and good, and I feel like Kylo Ren is going to fall farther and farther towards the dark side now. Um... I guess. I just came up with that now. <laughs> no, I feel like, especially with the scene where Kylo, one, Ray literally saved Kylo Ren's life, and Kylo mm -hmm. Ren saved right. Ray's life. So I feel like they're, I ultimately feel like in episode nine, this is a theory I have, that we're going to see actual balance come to the force, not like there's only good, because when there's only good, then obviously the scales are leaning one way, and when there's only bad, then the scales are leaning another way. You need an equal balance of both, and I feel like that's what episode 9 is going to come to is true balance in the force. Alright, well, you have your theory. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with it. Character development, there was a lot of that. Um, I'm not sure I like Poe's. Poe yeah. Dameron, he was just a really nice, good character in episode 7 and they kind of just made him a jerk in this one. I, I, yeah. just like, it just, I didn't like that part of it. They, they kind of made him arrogant mm -hmm. and Headstrong. Moss's clip where she was on the telegram. Uh, that was kind of funny. <laughs> was it like, like a union dispute. <laughs> uh, oh, that was good. That that Moss made. It was more of a glorified cameo. Yeah. Um, but she was good. I didn't like Moss at all in The Force Awakens. I know yeah. some people love her. I she I, was she was too creepy. She was a little creepy in this one. She was kind of just like the crazy old lady. Thin mm -hmm. had really good character development yeah. because we see in the final act of the movie he's willing to sacrifice himself for the rebellion yeah. whereas in The Force Awakens all he was trying to do was get away from the First Order right. he didn't necessarily care for the cause yeah he's really he's really but now, the rebellion now Kylo Ren and Rey mm -hmm. their story arcs are complete opposites of each other but also intertwined so perfectly that it just yeah. works there, there was some weird stuff happening between them in the movie, but I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what all, what it all means. Captain Phasma's dead. Captain Phasma died. I, I didn't hate Captain Phasma. I hated right. how much, how much, uh, how much people were making a big deal about her. I mean, she was just a stormtrooper captain. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of glad that she died, just for that reason. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't like the character. I feel like she, there's so much hype, and literally, she never does anything in any movie. She always just gets defeated. Like I, she's just a lame character. Yeah. Luke dies in the end. I think he he just kind of dies of exhaustion after he's like uh, projecting himself to Kylo Ren in a final battle that she wasn't actually there. We find out that was a big plot twist. Yeah. Like, but he didn't really die. They say at the end of the movie that. When they Ray and Leia. Also, if Leia uses the Force in this movie. Oh yeah, which is that was like legit. What? Amazing. But um, they say at the end of the movie, Ray and Leia are talking because they're both Force sensitive. They sensed Luke leave, like yeah. that he he was no longer in the galaxy. Yeah. So, but then they went on to say like it wasn't pain or sadness. Mm -hmm. It was peace. Yeah. So I think. He, he realized that his time had come, he couldn't do anymore. He did he did what he needed to do, and I think he, looking at the twin sons, they kind of mirrored when he became a Jedi and when he ended a Jedi. He's sitting there looking at two suns in the sky and just kind of fades away. I feel like that, yeah. But you said this earlier, that would have been a perfect way to end episode nine. But yeah. I'm not... But Luke's final words were see around. Oh yeah, he's definitely going to be a So, a, I feel a, like he was both talking to ghost. Ben Solo and Yeah, he's going to be a, the, he's going to be a ghost in episode 9. Um, so let's talk about Leia real quick too. She used the Force. That was cool. Yeah. Um she, she didn't die. So I guess 
I don't know how they're gonna deal with that. Maybe it'll just say in the opening crawl of next movie. Oh, by the way, she died. Uh, they better not do <laughs> that. <laughs> that. <laughs> That would, no. They better not do not be like that. In the initial shock of it, I thought, oh my goodness, they killed Leia this early Yeah, I did too. But then I was just like, but I feel like she didn't explode. And then like a yeah. couple minutes later, they showed that she's actually force sensitive and was able to survive being out in space for a little bit. Yeah. Which was really cool. I'm like, still believing that Rey is a Kenobi! I feel like... J.J. Abrams had a plan for Rey. I feel like when J.J. Abrams takes over episode 9 again, he'll definitely do something with Rey. I, yeah, I hope he does. I mean, because she's definitely not the daughter of Obi-Wan. She's probably the granddaughter. Yeah. And they could easily say, oh, yeah, even though your parents were just junkers, your grandfather was Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I mean, cause something like that. Before, I mean, in the 30 years that Obi-Wan was on Tatooine, I mean, he was kind of just a loser, too. So, I mean... Between he was a, he was a crazy old hermit. Yeah, the door is definitely a, still open, yeah. but he's definitely closed it a little bit. Snoke, I really liked his character in this. Yeah, I didn't feel like he, they should have killed him this Agreed. early on. I feel like they should have saved that final confrontation scene where Kylo Ren rejects Snoke for Episode Nine. Ray is on the ground before Kylo Ren, and Snoke's like, then my apprentice turns his lightsaber towards his true enemy mm -hmm. and then and kills them mm -hmm. and as Snoke has Rey's lightsaber right on the yeah. arm of the chair and as he's saying this Kylo Ren is using the force turns the lightsaber mm -hmm. towards um towards Snoke and activates it and kills him yeah. rather than killing Rey so really Kylo Ren's true enemy mm -hmm. was Snoke it was never Rey or the first mm -hmm. It wasn't even Han Solo. We learned in the movie that he yeah. didn't hate Han Solo. He just did what he had to do for Snoke, and ultimately he rejected Snoke. Overall, our thoughts for the movie, we liked it, but there's some things about it we didn't quite get behind. I don't think it's anything that can't be fixed to our complete satisfaction in Episode Nine by J.J. Abrams. I liked the movie. It was good. Go see it. Yay. Hopefully you already did go see it, if you're watching to this point. <laughs> Drugs Otherwise, there's no point in seeing it now. Yeah. Told you everything. I like yeah. literally everything. Yeah. Drugs not pugs. Drugs not pugs. All right. That's all for today's video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button down below, and don't forget to click the notification bell and become a part of the notification squad. Check out my Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus pages. Links for those are down in the description. Get yourself some merch. You can no longer get free shipping. You should have done that. Anyways, it's still 10% off until Christmas, so go get yourself some merch uh it might get to your house in time for christmas maybe i think probably it goes pretty fast it takes only a few days it's still not selling like a god church thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you next time which is actually tomorrow when i'm going to be eating a spoonful of red pepper tune in at five o'clock to see that video and i will see you guys next time peace